Welcome to CEO Connect, presented by CU Solutions Group. On this month's episode, we'll discuss workplace diversity and its impact on organizational performance. As we age personally and professionally, I think we all ask the question, if I had it to do all over again, what would I change? Well, as a 60-year-old white male executive, one thing that I would have done more effectively is mentor both men and women within my sphere of influence more effectively than I did. Now, like with any introspective assessment, I have to say that I haven't failed, I just could have done a lot better. But despite my shortcomings in this area, now I can bring awareness to the topic and use my remaining years and my influence to make a meaningful difference. So a good friend of mine who happens to be a hard-driving, tenacious young leader helped me to see one of these flaws. She never referred to me, she just described her journey and perspective. And unfortunately, in far too many instances, I saw myself in some of her examples of what I would call male ignorance in the area of mentoring. As she pointed out, as a woman, she noticed that when power lunches or small golf outings were organized, the guys often seemed to exclude women. These men, in my opinion, didn't mean to be exclusive, but they migrated to the so-called good old boys outings as opposed to being inclusive. As subtle as her examples were, I realized, much to my dismay, that I had been guilty of some of those practices. Whether it was filling a golf foursome, scheduling lunch meetings, or while attending after-hour cocktail events or dinner meetings, I often favored male team members or male associates in the credit industry. What was once an unconscious action has become very clear to me now, and now I look for opportunities of inclusivity in these types of social settings. And of course, this occurs with all affinity groups, such as female executives, young professionals, certain specialized employees, or even demographic groups. The message is this, inclusive mentoring is not just a gender issue, it should be required of all executives and apply to all types of diversity. The why behind inclusive mentoring is obvious, but I'll overstate it nonetheless. The majority of credit union employees and management staff are women. A significant majority of small and mid-sized credit unions are run by women. Much to my delight in Michigan, some of our largest and most progressive credit unions are now led by women. For instance, Michigan's largest credit union, Lake Michigan Credit Union, is led by Sandy Jelinski, an incredible leader. And four of our 10 largest credit unions have a woman at the helm. That's progress in that we're seeing more gender diversity in the largest credit unions in Michigan. For state leagues, the two largest are now run by exceptional female leaders, Diana Dykstra at the California Nevada League, and Caroline Willard at the Cornerstone League. And organizations like NASCAS, NCUA, and others have had women or do have women at the helm now. So that's progress. But for all leaders of credit unions and credit organizations, we need to work harder to institutionalize inclusion in boardrooms, executive teams, and individual departments. It's well known that in corporate America, however, 95% of the Fortune 500 companies are led by men. General Motors is an exception. Their CEO, Mary Barr, is an exception to that trend. And in a male-dominated auto industry, she's overseen one of the most remarkable corporate turnarounds in US history. She is an incredibly respected leader who has fought her way through the power structure to achieve the top status at GM. Now, I found it interesting, as a former HR executive at General Motors, Barr brought amazing insight and simplicity here. I call it the power of simplicity to the company's dress code by reducing General Motors dress code to two words, dress appropriately. I think that's brilliant. Diversity challenges the status quo and brings fresh perspective that drives innovation and culture enhancements. In his book, Why Women? The Leadership Imperative to Advancing Women and Engaging Men, author Jeffrey Tobias Halter suggests that, quote, engaging men as champions and advocates who recognize the value of women is the cornerstone of organizational success. They must be leaders who get it and walk the talk every day in their actions and communications. That's what I want to be during the remaining years of my career. On a personal note, my mother raised me and my three brothers alone after my father died in a small plane crash in 1961. She had only a high school education, worked mostly minimum wage jobs. She faced discrimination and sexual harassment in the small company she worked for. 
She was and is the toughest person I've ever known, and what she taught me was tremendous respect for the unique attributes of female leaders. Let's face it, we're all different, and it's precisely those differences that should require us to seek gender and ethnic diversity at all levels of our organizations, and an absence of discrimination of any kind. Creating and fostering a culture of inclusion and respect along with zero tolerance for discrimination is critical for any company's brand and its effectiveness in attracting and retaining top talent. This is especially true for credit unions and financial institutions. Think about it. According to SheEconomy.com, women account for 85% of all consumer purchases, spanning everything from groceries and home improvements to automobiles and healthcare. That number is an astounding 89% of decisions with regard to banking services. So whether the credit union is focused on visioning, product development, marketing, or omni-channel member experience improvements, having women's leadership and operational perspectives is simply critical. We all need to do better in accepting the need for diversity, especially gender diversity, and mentoring tomorrow's leaders. I suggest that there are five things that every male and female executive should consider as a self-assessment in this area. Leveraging these five can resolve to broaden awareness and be more inclusive in mentoring, especially as it relates to gender inclusion. So number one, get rid of the excuses. Consciously or subconsciously, we all have our excuses for maintaining the status quo. Get rid of them. This isn't going to create a culture of reverse discrimination. It's about inclusion and giving everyone a fair shot. It's the right thing to do. And no matter how good you think you are doing or how well you think your organization is doing, you can and should do better. Gender and ethnic diversity bring more innovation, creativity, and greater alignment with the members and customers that an organization is serving. It also strengthens the corporate brand internally and externally, and it's the right thing to do, as I said. Second, do an honest inventory of your behavior as a leader. Every executive should do a complete self-assessment. I've tried to do that, and that's kind of ongoing. It isn't enough to be tolerant or to not discriminate. Take a look at your unconscious bias. The real question is, do you look for opportunities to proactively mentor both men and women in your organization within your sphere of influence? And do you do so with equal favor to both men and women? Get rid of all exclusionary tendencies that favor one or the other. Realize that you have a responsibility to mentor equally and fairly. That's what I'm telling myself these days. Third, conduct an objective review of your organization's practices with regard to gender inclusion and pay equity. After attending a recent National Credit Roundtable meeting where gender inclusion was showcased, I came back to the office and asked my chief culture officer, Amanda, to give me an objective assessment of our gender pay equity in our company, as well as ethnic and gender diversity for our 150 plus employees. Well, I was pleased to learn that we have a relatively balanced organization. We have 65% female to male, and on a pay equity basis, our female team members are slightly better compensated on both base and total compensation than their male counterpart. So there's some good news there. Now we're examining opportunities to continue broadening our ethnic diversities to better represent our national and state markets. And we'd like to see continued growth in female and ethnic representation in our most senior positions. I also believe that we need more formality for sensitivity training regarding sexual harassment, discrimination, mentoring, as I said, and gender and ethnic inclusion. So those are some things that we're gonna work on. But the journey of a thousand miles begins with a good objective assessment where opportunities can be identified. Number four, resolve to change with very specific activities for yourself and your organization. This is one of the toughest, in my opinion. We're, we're all creatures of habit and we have to want to be better and to do so consciously. For my part, I've resolved to make sure that at all levels of the organization that we do several things. We need, to, we need more awareness at all levels to uh, broaden applicant pools to include gender and ethnic diversity. And where there's an imbalance, the tide should go in the direction of creating necessary diversity. In other areas of potential discrimination, including those protected by law, managers at all levels just need to hear from the CEO and all senior management members that the company's culture has zero tolerance for discrimination of any kind. 
and the CEO has to lead by example. All managers need to be encouraged by the CEO to mentor in an inclusive way, and open dialogue with team members can certainly help with that. All leaders, both men and women, need to be better listeners, especially on this topic of understanding where women face barriers to communication and advancement. At the Michigan Credit Union League and CU Solutions Group, we recently introduced a book into our company culture called Daring Greatly, written by author Brene Brown. It encourages vulnerability and more empathic listening at all levels. Tools like this are helpful and send the right message to the whole team. Number five, rid your organization of discrimination of any kind and foster inclusion at all levels. Our next step at CU Solutions Group and Michigan Credit Union League will be to review department by department to see if in some cases we might have swung too far in one direction. If a department is almost entirely female or heavily concentrated or entirely of one demographic group, it might be time to encourage diversity in the other direction. Again, hiring should always be about hiring the most qualified person for any position, but without discrimination of any kind. And I also want to do a better job of creating awareness and expanding training so that all of our leaders and team members understand the why behind gender and ethnic inclusion, and not just the legal side of it. CU Solutions Group is proud to serve credit unions with products in areas of technology, marketing, and performance solutions. Great products like Performance Pro and Compies. In the case of Compies, in addition to providing an efficient and effective means of establishing wage and salary ranges and managing compensation position by position, this tool can help with pay equity decisions, likewise on a position by position basis. Great companies like Google are doing this as a commitment to pay equity, and Compies is a tool to help credit unions do just that. Now, CUSG has also long offered HR consulting services and is now expanding into a suite of strategic advisory services led by Senior VP Brandy Stankovic. We look forward to working with credit unions and credit union organizations to help them establish HR practices that enhance the culture and provide a platform for attracting and retaining the talent needed for the future. Brandy and her team can help do the assessment of pay equity and hiring practices and provide board level awareness, strategic discussions, and improve open dialogue and commitment to the leadership imperative for advancing women and engaging men. Progressive credit unions and credit union organizations need to position themselves to attract, retain, and develop the workforce of the future. Diversity and the leadership mentoring that helps achieve this in leadership positions will be critical success drivers.